Welcome back our dear viewers on the 17th of December 1999. The United Nations General Assembly decided in its resolution to declare the 12th of August to be the International Youth Day. The event is celebrated annually the International Youth Day in order to focus the international community's attention on youth issues and uh, celebrate their potential as partners in the contemporary global community. To shed more light on the issue, we are very much delighted to be joined here in the studio by Dr. Ahmed Muntasir. Uh, Dr. Ahmed is CEO of the American Training Academy, LLC, and um, doctorate in crisis management from uh, university in Chicago. Good morning, uh, Dr. Muntasir, and thank you very much for being our guest. Good today. morning, Ms. Mahesti, and thank you for your invitation today. Thank you, sir. Uh, Dr. Muntasir assigning the leadership positions uh, to the youth since uh, actually 2014, President Sisi has placed the youth among his top priorities and qualified them to assume a various uh, leadership position by adopting the theory of qualification before empowerment. What's your take on that and how successful is this experiment? Wow. Thank you so much. That's a great question. So when we talk about uh, the theory of qualification before empowerment, mm -hmm. we need to know that this means that we are developing leaders with the skills, knowledge and competencies in order to be able to empower themselves, to be able to go and leave an impact in the society through having the authority because this is the theory of uh, qualification before empowerment. Yeah. So when we see this concept, we see that this is allowing people to empower themselves in the community, but they are also qualified. They are leaving a positive impact. So this will give two advantages. Uh -huh. The first one is skill development. The youth, they are the future leaders. So they will be acquiring skills and knowledge that help them to leave the positive impact in the market and contribute to the Egyptian mm. society. Yeah. So that's really a great concept. The second thing is mitigating the risk. How we mitigate the risk when we apply this concept? You know that those future leaders, those youth, will be able to make informative, effective decision making, mm. which will allow them to make a wider impact in the community. Yeah. So that concept by the President uh, Abdel Fattah Sisi was a, a great concept and the implementation was fantastic. Indeed. Thank you. Sir, uh, actually mm. the Central Agency for Public Mobilization and Statistics uh, announced that the percentage of youth participation uh, in Egypt amounts to 21% of the total population, while the United Nations called for empowering the youth and developing their skills, which mean that Egypt is a young country. How do you think the Egyptian youth can be successful in their position regardless of their age? Actually, regardless of the age, Egyptian youth uh, are leaving great impact. I have been uh, through 14 countries and wherever I go, I always see Egyptian youth that making change in their mm -hmm. community inside Egypt and abroad because they have the energy, they have the passion, they have the enthusiasm and also they are in a very supportive environment where they can learn from their mentors, from the potential leaders, mm. but also they have their voices heard. So they make a global impact, mm. not only in Egypt, but also worldwide. Mm. And by fostering the technological updates, yeah. artificial intelligence, mm. by being those leaders with the entrepreneurial mindset, yeah. they have the critical thinking, they can definitely make a great impact in the How community. that could be reach, uh, Dr. Muntasar, as uh, of course we are giving uh, great uh, attention to the youth uh, these days, the Egyptian administration is paying great attention to the youth. Uh, um, how that could be achieved to develop the, the youth uh, skill, uh, their entrepreneurial uh, capabilities and uh, uh, giving them more opportunities here? Great. So uh, let's go and see um, the great things that uh, was uh, happening in the World Youth Forum, for yeah. example. When, when we look and reflect for the World Youth Forum, we see that there is a great network between the Egyptian youth and youth from all over the world yeah. where they are having leadership workshops. Workshops mm -hmm. that are addressing the issues, the global issues. Uh -huh. Plus, they are brainstorming with their groups, with their mentors, in order to find mm -hmm. innovative solutions. Mm -hmm. So those innovative solutions can definitely leave a great impact worldwide. Mm -hmm. And they start from 
the Egypt. And that's really a great opportunity because right now the Egyptian youth are uh, empowered. They have the passion. They are confident to say we can make a change. And uh, we, are, we are here in this month of uh, the International Youth Day, yeah. you know. So it's really important to know that we have hope and we can make a change, positive change to the community and to the world. Mm -hmm. Actually, serious and uh, strong empowerment of youth by the political leadership uh, used to represent 60% of the population of Egypt, right. and the state uh, relies um, heavily on them in the modern development uh, plans, indicating that the word youth empowerment was like a dream in Egypt, actually, until uh, the president uh, came uh, to power and put youth as a top priority, assuming their... Uh, their executive uh, position. Uh, actually, uh, how is such power invested uh, till that moment, uh, Dr. Montasser? Great. That's really a great question. Let's see uh, what happened uh, because of the support of the president, mm -hmm. Abdel Fattah Sisi. We see that there is the youth-focused policies. Okay. Mm -hmm. When we talk about the youth-focused policies, we are talking about education. We are talking mm -hmm. about employment, health. We are talking about the civic engagement where you have the youth empowered to create a change. Also, we can go and see the youth employment initiatives such as Haya Karima, yeah. uh, such as Takaful and Karama. And those are really helping the youth by, because we support them uh, by the financial support, mm. because we provide the vocational training as mentors, as leaders. Mm. Um, and um, this will allow them to be empowered for the community. Also, we look for the entrepreneurship, entrepreneurship and innovation. We can see Fikretak Sharkatak. Fikretak mm. Sharkatak is really a great um, a project and uh, you can see a lot of people can be empowered to run their companies, to have startups. And all of those things um, wouldn't happen if you uh, don't have this supportive environment uh, that empower and mm. foster innovation. Uh, and success. Also, uh, one of the great things that we uh, need to talk about is the PLP, mm -hmm. the Presidential Leadership Program. Indeed. Uh, definitely, because um, in this program you are empowering the, the youth and you are hearing uh, their voices and mm -hmm. you are trying to find innovative, inclusive solution mm -hmm. that can really create a fast impact in this fast global environment that we are living in. Yes. And uh, back to uh, the PLP, uh, Dr. Montasser, we, we have seen uh, many cycles of that uh, program and many youth actually uh, having uh, positions in the uh, governmental institutions as well as many other institutions as well. To what extent here uh, mingling the youth and giving them leadership uh, uh, um, uh, training uh, uh, and giving them position uh, as uh, um, assistant governors, as many other positions as well, is helping actually in engaging the uh, Egyptian youth in uh, the government and in the decision-making process as well. Wow, that's really a great question. Thank you for bringing this. Because according to the daily news, mm. we see that 25% now of the women have yeah. representation in the, the parliament. Yeah. And uh, this happened because of uh, the president uh, support. Mm for women empowerment yeah we can see also that right now you have many women in senior position you have women such as governors deputy ministers mm. and all of this can show that you are empowering women in the public mm. prosecution mm. and the state council for the first time mm. so this shows the uh, uh, women uh, empowerment uh, as well and um, this will take us to the gender equity because mm. this is part of the success of any nation that you yeah. have gender equity you have the opportunity available for anyone mm. so it's very equity equitable and fair so everyone can go and can have hope for leaving a positive impact in the society mm. doctor uh, again as you have kindly mentioned now women empowerment and youth empowerment are right. uh, two of the main concern of our administration and we did uh, see many leaps and many achievements in these domains, but yet we, we might say that we are still greedy for more, uh, if I might say, and we, we, we are seeking for more. To what extent we did reach uh, uh, success in our plan for uh, uh, women empowerment and youth empowerment, and we are seeing real engagement for both women and youth in the society. And we, we have seen now women uh, taking position maybe in uh, different institutions on the political, economical, uh, business levels uh, that they did not achieve be before and they did enter uh, many uh, governmental institutions that they did not uh, uh, participate in before. 
Wow. Thank you for bringing this uh, point because actually when we talk about women empowerment and youth empowerment, mm. so we are talking about two pillars that can really take a country yeah. for the success. Mm. And also when we look for those two pillars, we can see that they bring us to a very, um, I can say the magic word, the mm. diversity is a magic word. Why? Because diversity will foster innovation. So when you have women, when you have youth, when you have those people working together, from different ages, from different backgrounds, this fosters innovation. And when you foster innovation, mm -hmm. you are having a high chance to find innovative solutions to solve the society issues. Yeah. But not only in local, in Egypt, but global as well. Yeah. So uh, they did a great job. Yes. What, from your point of view, are the mechanisms actually of communications between the state and the youth from your point of view, Dr. Montasr? I can see the forums that we, we see right now um, are really uh, helping mm. the youth with the state mm. to connect together. I can see uh, the open channel of communication is really empowering, giving hope to, uh, mm. to youth to, uh, to have the dream, to mm. know that they can really make a big impact worldwide. Mm -hmm. And this is aligned also with the United Nations uh, uh, overall goal because, as you know, um, last year, for example, they were talking about having uh, different ages working under the same umbrella as you, you are talking about women, empowerment, youth and so on. And in this year, they are talking about uh, being sustainable and the green skills mm -hmm. to empower youth with green skills to... Um, be able to find the solutions for the global issues. Mm. How, in your opinion, can we enhance youth potential so they can actually adapt uh, to the position they are assigned to? I think uh, in this point, we need to always connect them with the right mentor. Because when you are connected with the right mentor, you are preparing yourself for the future. You are preparing yourself by being ready for uh, overcoming any mm. challenge. Mm. And this will help you to be confident leader that uh, people will believe in your vision and you will at the end create a big difference yes. so that's very important how how we can actually provide good mentoring uh, for the youth and uh, indeed uh, uh, as you, you you might correct me if i'm wrong uh, we are seeing now many incubators uh, in different universities on, in the private sector correct. in uh, different uh, places and many accelerators to help the young entrepreneurs uh, to uh, develop their uh, ideas and their companies and uh, they might also provide some investors as well so how that could be actually of great help to the youth on other on another front than uh, the being uh, part of uh, the Egyptian administration and uh, the governmental positions um, thank you for bringing this point that's really important because as you know youth are the economic uh, development and they can take the uh, mm. progress of the country uh, mm. and run with it. They can uh, make sure that uh, they are working on the needs of mm. the uh, citizens and find innovative products and services mm. that can help them and uh, allow them to find the solution mm. and match their needs and wants. So I think that's really important that uh, I'm really proud that the Egyptian youth right now, they are really having this entrepreneurial mindset. Mm. They have this inclusiveness when they talk with each other. They know that they need to network with people from other cultures mm. and this will give them the edge because culture intelligence, artificial intelligence, emotional intelligence, those are really important expressions. We need to not only mm. hear them, we need to learn how to put them into practice. Yeah. yeah. Dr. Montasser, um, as you, you have kindly mentioned also that we are seeing here new mindsets for the youth. We are seeing uh, more innovative ideas. Uh, and many uh, uh, young people now uh, are not willing actually to uh, be part of uh, um, uh, office work or uh, of the governmental uh, business, but they want to have their own innovative ideas and to create their own companies to, have, to be uh, an entrepreneur. So how the state is helping the youth and in uh, many occasions the president did uh, mention uh, that he's encouraging uh, this very much and we have seen some procedures also uh, implemented by the government in order to encourage the youth for these uh, uh, projects and to be more innovative and to have their own uh, businesses and companies. Uh, how do you see the efforts exerted by the government to reach that? 
Actually, I saw a great effort because while I was in the U.S., I was um, always seeing the ads about uh, those scholarships that the um, uh, Ministry of Communication was providing for the youth in Egypt. Yeah. And they, uh, they were actually fully funded, which was really great. <laughs> yes, and I indeed. was really so proud that my country mm. uh, is really uh, empowering the youth, um, looking for the future, uh, empowering them with the resources they need. And uh, I'm really confident that... Uh, um, the youth will really make a big difference. They will really uh, create a big impact with the support of the president and mm. uh, with, with having a supportive environment. Mm. Uh, sustainability is a key. I think uh, we need to uh, put our hands together and focus more mm. uh, to, uh, to leave a positive impact in mm. the society. Indeed, also the president has directed all the state institutions to work in order to empower the youth which is an unprecedented achievement. Uh, how do you see that and uh, what are here the incentives given uh, to the youth in order to encourage them as well? And uh, I do believe that the, the, the president uh, uh, exempted the, uh, the youth from paying uh, for the taxes for the, sm uh, the small businesses. Uh, how do you see these incentives and what more should be done in order to encourage our youth to uh, have their own businesses and uh, to be part of our uh, um, business environment. Uh, well, thank you so much because uh, you are, hi you are um, highlighting the most important point here, which is uh, how to be sustainable yes. in our success. And uh, when we uh, reflect on what you said, mm. I think more forums um, uh, with other countries to make sure that uh, we are connecting youth together, mm. uh, sending the, the students abroad through internships, through uh, a lot of um, events where you can uh, connect with other people from other countries. Yeah. And uh, by this you are, um, you are uh, working in synergies. Because nowadays we are in the global era, uh, we, we are always connecting. And the World Youth Forum was really uh, mm. uh, doing uh, a great job like mm. with the uh, supervision of President Sisi. Because in the part of the World Youth Forum there was a recognition for awards for the youth. Yeah. So you can see in the World Youth Forum there was some uh, youth who created a positive impact in Egypt and they were rewarded by the President Abdel Fattah Sisi. Yeah. So those things are really great because they are empowering the youth, they are uh, um, showing that the top, um, ma ma not management, I can say the President and the, the ministers, they really see the efforts from those youth and they are rewarding them, they mm. are recognizing them and this will give them the hope and uh, motivation. Yes. Sir, um, as uh, you, you are in that field, to what extent the fact that the state is um, encouraging and recognizing the youth and their efforts and trying to give them a, 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 an opportunity to exchange experiences with the uh, international youth as well through the, the World Youth Forum and uh, through okay. giving them internships and uh, 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 other um, uh, training abroad and uh, in the country, the, the youth are feeling recognized and appreciated and supported by their government and what could be the impact of this on them? Actually, let me talk about myself here because I already took my education from Egypt. I yes. had my bachelor degree from German University. And when I traveled first to Germany, I felt I'm really empowered with the type of education I have here in Egypt. Mm. So uh, this allowed me when I went outside mm. and I connected with other people from other countries, mm. uh, I was feeling that uh, the education I had in Egypt was really great. And mm. uh, actually, I'm also having the gratitude that I have the other knowledge and uh, the advanced uh, information and knowledge from Germany and USA yeah. and um, let me hit, uh, highlight yes, here please. what you, you said. You said here the point of connecting the youth with the advanced knowledge. Mm. For example, right now when we talk about fostering the technological updates, the fast-paced globalized uh, changes that mm. we, f we face, so all of those things we need to connect together and to be updated with other countries so as we have this synergism effect. We are working in a global, mm. uh, I can say, platform. You yeah. know? Uh, Doctor, uh, and I, I would like here to um, talk more about your own experience as yes. um, you are young yourself. Thank you. you have uh, studied here in Egypt. You have continued your uh, post studies abroad. To what extent you feel here the sense of belonging to your uh, mother country, to Egypt? And you feel that 
no, I want to return back and I want to share my own experience with the Egyptian youth. I do not want to, uh, to, to be uh, the, uh, abroad or to continue abroad and cut my roots. So can you tell us more about the youth and the sense of belonging that uh, being appreciated and being supported by your own government and your own administration can give uh, for you? Sure. I feel the gratitude toward my country, Egypt. Mm -hmm. And that's why uh, when I had the doctorate degree in crisis management, I had uh, Egypt in my study. So when I published the research, I had Egypt uh, in the countries that I was studying uh, because I was asking this question, what yeah. crisis management strategies effective leaders have implemented to overcome a natural disaster or a human-made crisis? And mm -hmm. I added Egypt yes. in, in the study. Mm -hmm. Also through the American Training Academy, we are offering a lot of uh, mentorship, a lot of courses uh, to uh, connect the youth in Egypt with yeah. uh, global experts in the USA and all over the world. So uh, I feel that that's wh what I should uh, do because it's a responsibility on my shoulders yes. because this is my country and I need to give back. Yes, and we do appreciate that and we want all our youth to feel the same sense of belonging and uh, sense of responsibility towards uh, Egypt. Uh, indeed, uh, Dr. Ahmed de Montasser, CEO of American Training Academy, LLC, and doctorate in crisis management from uh, University in Chicago. Thank you so much for being our guest, and we wish you the best of luck. Thank you for your invitation today. Thank, Thank you so, so much. Thank you so much, Dr. Montasser. Our dear reviewers, that was our segment in the breakfast show about the celebrating, marking the International Youth Day, which was uh, celebrated on the 12th of August. And we'll go to a short break, and after that, we'll be back to continue our segments in the breakfast show. Thank you so much.